Hanging in the night sky, a beacon in the darkness, a symbol of mystery, of dissonance, and of reprieve, the moon is the night's lighthouse as it shines dimly over all of our real world, but also over our video game worlds because, uh, because it does. See, look, it's, it's, it's right there. Video game moons are often built into the skybox, functioning merely as a set piece to ground the world. But today I want to talk about video games where the moon plays a vital role in gameplay or in the story. So let's have a look at how the moon is used in video games. Traveling to the moon took humans millions of years of painstakingly slow growth as we crawled forward in an eventual goal to stand on it for mere minutes. But Mario found a spaceship that looks like a hat and, oh hey Neil, look, he's on the moon. While Mario might be stomping on the corpses of astronauts, he is also bounding across the crater-filled terrain of the moon in Super Mario Odyssey. The moon world gives you a whole new way of playing Mario. Now you can jump a little higher. Innovation. It also hosts both of the game's conclusions, the main one in which Mario saves the day, and also the secret one which takes 600 moons to get to, uh, in which he saves the day. It's kind of his whole thing. All of this means that the moon is an integral bit of Mario's adventure as the entire journey culminates in your trek there. And like I mentioned earlier, Mario's moon plays completely different from the other worlds owing to its low gravity, which plays an enormous role since most of Mario's abilities lie in his jumping. Odyssey's moon doesn't feel phoned in, it earns its place in the creative playground of Mario. But Mario isn't the only Nintendo character to find himself in and on the moon. In The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, the moon crashes into Earth, and also, the moon is really ugly. That's an ugly moon. I mean, look at it, jeez, that thing's disgusting. As the game continues, Link is forced to find a way to halt the crashing of the moon and the destruction of the game world. Eventually, Link travels inside the moon, defeating Majora and returning the moon to its place in the sky. Thank you, Link, very cool. There are also many games which elect to use the moon as a setting for combat. In Destiny, the moon is one of the first places you travel in order to fight the hive and quell the darkness. In Call of Duty Black Ops, you go to the moon to fight zombies, and in Overwatch, you travel to Winston's home, the lunar colony on the moon, where you fight back and forth for supremacy. Oh, no you won't, because they deleted it. The moon plays host to many fights and is mostly used for the aesthetic, as the gameplay throughout these experiences isn't really altered. But most of us won't go to the moon in our real lives, because most of us aren't pompous, selfish billionaires. Most of us. Do you get it? Because I'm on the moon. And since you can't go to the moon, you instead have to relate to all of those characters who also just look at the moon as a symbol. Elden Ring holds the moon at the forefront of one of its main quests, as Ronnie uses you alongside the power of the moon to become queen of the lands between. As you work for her, you will similarly harness some of its powers, wielding things like spells and swords which weaponize the moon. The moon holds great power in Elden Ring and is studied by lots of the game's sorcerers, as most magic originates from it. And also this. I don't know where we are, but uh, that's the moon, right, right there, uh, right, you see it? It's, it's right there. Earth's moon is represented all over the video game's Cosmosphere, do you see what I did there? It's pretty funny. As it is used both as a playground for gameplay and a narrative device to explain the mysterious. But even when it isn't at the forefront, it hangs there as a reminder of its importance, both in our video games and in our real world. So, thanks moon.